Hello, I'm Betty Lee and today I'm at Navin Fort in Armagh and I'm going to read the review of Cúhollin Ulster's Greatest Hero by Raymond O'Kieran, A Vibrant Legacy. O'Kieran's Cúhollin Ulster's Greatest Hero conveys the dazzling stories of a splendid hero from ancient Irish lore with vigour and elegance. Raymond O'Kieran is a writer, rigorous in his attention to detail, balanced with a compassion for his subjects. He moves the reader effortlessly along on the journey, spinning stories rich in mythology and weaves them through the account of Cúhollin's life with seamless accord. Illustrated with paintings by Dara Vallely, the physical book is magnificent to behold. The robust imagery engages our innermost tribal essence, freeing our mind's eye and transporting us to an ethereal plane. Fantasy melds with lucid narrative as together O'Kieran and Vallely depict the mystical, mystical conception, life and death of our hero in this vivid meeting of worlds. Based on the modern Ulster Irish language version Lake Nalefra, also by O'Kieran, the writing in this text retains the authentic flavour of locale by using Irish place names. An effective appendix helps the reader keep track of people and places in the story. It's a resource that is particularly useful and engaging due to the pronunciation guidelines and not being proficient in the Irish language myself, I welcome its gentle nudge towards my education in my native tongue. The translation doesn't feel forced. The words flow with ease and grace, retaining the essence of storytelling from a bygone era in stunning and dramatic expression that refuses to skirt around the violence of battle. Even with the ethereal quality brought in by the other worldly characters, there is a sense of historical accuracy we can appreciate how Iron Age people must have relied on their belief in the supernatural in the absence of scientific fact to explain the wonders of their world. The embellishments and exaggerations over time and numerous recounting of the tales add to the wonder and mystique of the legends they have become. This account begins with Cúhollin's conception. The Celtic god of harvest claims his paternity in a dream to Cúhollin's mother. When the child, originally called Shiranda, when he's born, he's deemed special, as prophesied by the chief druid. Shiranda receives special education and training as he grows up in Dundalk. He grows up listening to tales of the great warriors of Ulster and yearns to be one so much that he takes off on foot by himself and heads to Awanwaka, Navan Fort, here in Armagh, to join his heroes, the Cree Rua warriors based there. The young warrior Shidanda earns a new name when he, in self defence, kills the hound belonging to Cullen, the master smith and weapons maker for the Cree Rua. Shidanda promises to act as Cullen's hound until a replacement can be found and thus becomes Cúhollin, the Hound of Cullen, often referred to as the Hound of Ulster. Cúhollin, spe sorry, O'Kieran spends a lot of time chronicling the feats and achievements of the young warrior. Once Cúhollin is gripped by an anger frenzy, no man is safe, sometimes not even Cúhollin. Such is the energy of the power that he unleashes during these frenzies. On many occasions, Cúhollin has encounters with spirits from the other world who serve to both guide him and torment him depending on if they are friend or foe. We meet the beautiful Emer, the great love of Cúhollin's life. Her father convinces the King of Ulster to send Cúhollin to Scotland for battle training hoping that the young man never returns to claim his daughter's hand. While in Scotland, 
Cúhollán meets Aoife in single combat. He gets the upper hand and she pleads for her life. Whereupon Cúhollán makes three demands upon her, one of which is that she bear him a son to be schooled at Awan Wacha, like his father. Later in the text, our hearts break for Cúhollán as he's forced to face his own son in mortal combat. Having survived his rigorous training in Scotland, Cúhollán returns for his beloved Aimer's hand in marriage. Their marriage has its trials, as one might imagine in Iron Age times, with its battles, not to mention the spirits meddling from the underworld. But Aimer and Cúhollán's love lasts to the grave. We are immersed in the stories of Cúhollán as he interacts with the many characters in Awan Wacha. There's Brickra, whose main aim in life appears to be stirring up discord and mayhem. A dangerous game with these Ulster warriors who are prone to descend into anger frenzies. There are entertaining descriptions of not just the warriors' competition for prime position amongst themselves, but also the rivalry between their wives for prestige. A large portion of the book details the cattle raid of Cooley. When Maeve, the Queen of Connacht, decide, cra craves more power, she decides to invade Ulster and take possession of the prized bull of Cooley. Cúhollán must defend Ulster alone, due to his fellow warriors being laid low by a curse. Attack after attack, Cúhollán prevails but each time at great emotional and physical cost to him. Eventually, he must fight his best friend, Firdia. Raymond O'Kieran remains true to his narrative style while evoking a strong emotional response in the reader as he depicts Cúhollán, carrying Firdia's body dead by Cúhollán's own hand. By the time we get to the final part of the book, entitled The Death of Cúhollán, we know we must prepare ourselves to say goodbye to our hero. It is an emotive section, even with O'Kieran's consistent use of narrative style that serves to document story more than manipulate sentiment. Suffice it to say, I had to blink back tears as I read The Hound's last words. Tell Emer, it was her who was with me in my thoughts at the end. We grieve with Emer as she laments over the grave of her beloved Cúhollán. No review of this book would be complete without mentioning the role women play in this chronicle. O'Kieran gives equal weight with consideration and sensitivity to the prominence of powerful and influential women such as Emer, Queen Maeve, Aoife and her nemesis Skahas, who trained Cúhollán in his battle skills in Scotland. Yes, that was a woman. In sections of the book, indented passages indicate poetry which I suspect O'Kieran has preserved in its original form or as near to original form as possible. Being no expert in poetry, ancient or otherwise, I feel unqualified commenting other than to say that it lends the narrative a definite heft of authenticity, which, even though the words are English, whispers with the music of the Irish language. Reading this type of literature was a new experience for me. Its novelty served to enlighten and excite my imagination. I wholeheartedly value its vibrant legacy. I picture these characters existing here, in this place I call home. It reinforces my sense of living in a historically important place. No drive to Dublin will ever be the same again. As I view the stretch of road between Armagh and Dundalk, or Merhevnia, with eyes educated by this text, I think of the battles, 
that took place here. And the bloodshed sparked by a bull that symbolizes more than just a bull. And above all, I tunnel back through time to imagine Shidanda as a young boy, striking out across these fields and mountains towards his epic destiny at Awanwaka, Navin Fort, Armagh.